What's growing on gardeners? It's Sunday, June 13th, and I cannot be more excited to begin a brand new experiment. Today, I'm going to begin breeding figs. And if I do this correctly, I'm going to teach you how to do this too. Fair warning, this is probably going to be the nerdiest video I've ever made. Did you know that fig trees can be both male and female? The figs that we eat come from female fig trees, like the ones right here in front of me. It's the ladies that produce the figs that we all know and love. Male fig trees, on the other hand, are called capra figs. They produce figs too, but they're generally inedible. Male figs have two unique purposes. Number one, they hold the pollen that fertilizes the figs of the female fig trees. And number two, they house the fig wasps that actively fertilize the female fig trees. Male figs are actually pollen-filled wasp colonies. Have you heard the age-old story that there are wasps in your figs? Well, that's kind of true, but also kind of a lie. Let me explain. First off, the fig wasp is not a wasp like you're probably thinking. When you hear the word wasp, you're probably thinking of some big sting-crazy hornet or something. Fig wasp is just a nickname. The proper name of the species is the Blastophagia scenes. Did I say that correctly? Because I really need to brush up on my Latin. From here on out, I'm just going to call it the fig wasp. The fig wasp is a tiny insect, only about two millimeters in length, which makes it almost imperceptibly small. It's one of nature's most incredible examples of mutualism, which is a symbiotic relationship between two different species where both species benefit from their interaction. Without the fig wasp, there would be no fig trees because they wouldn't be able to produce fertile seed to reproduce. And without fig trees, fig wasps would be homeless and have nowhere to live. Fig wasps colonize the figs on male capra fig trees. Male capra figs have three different crops. The first crop is the profici, or braba crop, which ripens late spring and contains the fig pollen. The second crop is the mamoni, or fall crop, which ripens alongside the main crop of most female figs. For this reason, it is generally considered the male tree's main crop. And the third is the mame, or winter crop. This is the crop that is responsible for overwintering the very cold-sensitive fig wasp. The life cycle of the fig wasp is this. In late spring, the fig wasps begin to emerge from the capra fig's profici crop. The wingless male wasps expend all of their energy tunneling through the capra fig fruits until they create pathways for the winged female wasps to emerge. Once the females are freed, their goal is to fly into the osteole of the mamoni or main crop of the male capra fig to lay their eggs and begin a new wasp colony. However, the female fig wasp can hardly fly. The slightest breeze carries her away. The female is unable to distinguish between male and female figs. So if the wind carries the female wasp to a female fig, she will attempt to enter the osteole of the female fig. If she does this, she will tunnel through the osteole of the female fig, get stuck, rip her wings off in the process, and die. But remember, since she just emerged from the profici fig, she is covered in male pollen when she dies. This is how female figs become pollinated, or caprified. Female wasps covered in male fig pollen tunnel into them by mistake and die in the process. In that process, the female fig tree becomes fertilized and produces seed capable of growing into new fig trees. Now, if this sounds disgusting to you, don't worry. There aren't actually bugs in your figs. This process happens usually one to two months before the female figs ripen, and in that time, the natural enzymes of the fig have long since broken down and digested the bodies of the female wasp, leaving no trace of them. But there's more. The fig wasp is actually endemic to the Mediterranean. There are no fig wasps native to the United States. So how can we grow figs here if there are no fig wasps to pollinate our figs? That's because there are three different categories of female figs. The first and most coveted fig type is the common fig. Common figs are the most popular figs, and that's because they are parthenocarpic, which means they contain a mutated persistent allele. That means that they ripen without pollination. There are no fig wasps within 3,000 miles of where I live here in North Carolina, so I can only grow common figs. Every fig tree that I'm growing is a common fig, so that means there are no wasps in any of my figs. It also means that all of my figs produce hollow, seedless endocarps. In layman's terms, it means if I try and plant the endocarps inside my figs, they won't grow because they are seedless and infertile. 
If you live in any state in the United States other than California, there are no fig wasps in your figs and all of your endocarps are infertile and cannot be used to grow trees. The second female fig type is the San Pedro fig. San Pedro figs have a parthenocarpic braba crop, meaning you can ripen the braba without pollination. However, the main crop requires pollination, so unless you live in the Mediterranean or choice regions of California, 100% of your main crop figs will never ripen and they will drop. San Pedro figs are pretty uncommon, and the most popular San Pedro fig variety is called Desert King. The third and most likely fig type found in the wild is the Smyrna fig. Smyrna figs require pollination to ripen. If you don't have a capra fig that is colonized by fig wasps within a couple hundred feet of your Smyrna fig trees, you will not be able to harvest any of the figs. Now, I keep mentioning that California is an exception to fig wasp territory. That's because back in the late 1800s, commercial farmers successfully colonized the fig wasp in an attempt to breed the famous Turkish Smyrna fig, which you probably now know as the Calamira fig. It's a really amazing story, and I'm going to post a link in the video description to the story because it's really worth a read. But long story short, pockets of fig wasps were successfully established about 125 years ago in parts of California. However, because the fig wasp cannot survive temperatures colder than the low to mid 20s Fahrenheit, and they cannot fly very well, they have failed to spread very far. If you live in the San Joaquin Valley, the Sacramento River Valley, San Diego, and some milder coastal and inland regions of California, you may be able to find some colonized capra figs nearby, but most of California is not colonized due to climactic limitations. For those of us outside of California, Due to the mountains and desert that make up California's eastern border, the fig wasp has no natural way to migrate out of the state. If you don't live in these choice regions of California, you don't naturally colonize the fig wasp. Since I want to get into breeding figs here in North Carolina, I need to meet three conditions to be successful. Number one, since I can't use the fig wasps to fertilize my female figs, I need a method to hand pollinate them myself. Number two, since I can only grow parthenocarpic female figs in my region that carry the persistent allele, I need a way to ensure that the fertilized seed are not going to give me Smyrna and San Pedro types. And number three, I need male fig pollen from a certain type of capra fig, and that's because there are two different types of capra figs. In nature, most wild male capra figs will not carry the mutated persistent gene and will be caducus capra figs. If a female fig is fertilized by pollen from a caducus capra fig, all of the female offspring will be Smyrna figs. This means that all female figs will require pollination by the wasp to ripen their crop, and since most of us don't live anywhere near a fig wasp, those trees are useless to us. What I need is something called a persistent capra fig. Persistent capra figs contain a mutated allele that is dominant within the fig. When you cross any female fig with a persistent male capra fig, there is a chance that some of the seed within the female fig will contain the mutated persistent allele and grow into a persistent female fig tree. With figs, it is the male persistent gene that controls whether the offspring is persistent. It does not matter if the female is persistent or caducus, so the female tree you use for your breeding can either be common San Pedro or Smyrna. Over the last two years, I secured a persistent male capra fig right here that you can see, and it's finally mature enough to be producing its Braba profici crop, which I have in my hand right here. This capra fig is a persistent male capra fig from the University of California Riverside called UCR-271-1, also known as Salib. Crossing a female fig with this male capra fig will yield some amount of persistent female seed that I can grow figs here in North Carolina. But how do I know how much? Well, do you remember Punnett squares from seventh grade science class? According to my research, the best chance to develop a persistent female fig is by crossing a persistent capra fig with a persistent female fig. This is because the persistent male and female fig trees must be heterozygous. Based on this Punnett square, half of the seeds will fail to pollinate, 25% will fertilize but abort, and the other 25% will grow into a persistent offspring. 
Now you might be thinking, well, thanks a lot for the science lesson, but what does this mean in plain English? Well, what this means is if I take a whole bunch of that fertilized fig seed and I plant them and 12 of those seeds germinate, all 12 of them will be persistent trees and there'll be some random mix of male and female. I will then need to grow out all 12 fig trees for at least a year until they produce mature ripe figs to then test if they are male or female. All figs found to be female will be persistent trees and I can ripen them away from the wasp. The question is, how many of them will be female? I'm sure plenty of you watching have two or three kids that are all boys or all girls, so nature isn't always 50-50. I could wind up with 12 trees and all 12 being persistent female figs, or I could wind up with none. It's a gamble. This is the challenge that fruit tree breeders go through. Many of them plant hundreds of seeds, they raise those hundreds of trees for years, and they only come away with a handful of standout varieties worth propagating. So why do I want to go through this? Because it's fun. If I develop a standout fig, I can name it and propagate it to the community. And that's really cool. So this is what we'll be doing for this experiment. We will be harvesting male fig pollen from my persistent capper fig, hand pollinating a female fig of my choice with the male pollen, testing the seeds for fertility, attempting to germinate the fertile seed, growing those fig trees until maturity, evaluating any persistent females for fruit quality, and finally, if some of them turn out to be good, we can share the good quality female fig trees with the community. This will be a long-term experiment that will probably take two years or so to complete if I do this properly on my first try. However, in the end, if this experiment is successful, it will be literally the best information on the entire planet for amateur fig breeding, and that is truly priceless information to share with the world. So, I invite you to follow along with this very exciting experiment, and if you have access to a persistent capra fig, please join along in real time. So, make sure to stay tuned because I have ripe capra figs on my tree right now and I will be harvesting the pollen shortly to begin the experiment. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful and exciting and I sure hope that you all stick around throughout the duration of this experiment. If you like this content, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I use in my garden, they are all linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. So give that a peek for some really awesome products that will help you garden. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see all of you again on the next one. Daly's really upset because mom had to go to work, and he misses mommy. But I know what always makes Dale feel a lot better, and that's a nice, good howl. so handsome, your lip is stuck, you're too stuck.